Now I know we've been talking a lot about the Polaroid Originals integral film emulsions for your cameras like the SX70, the Spectra series, the 600 series, and the One Step 2, but let's take a step back and talk about pack film or peel apart film because this might be your last chance to shoot with this kind of film. Hey fellow photographers, what did you shoot today? Today we're going to be going over the history and actually shoot with some peel-apart film, or pack film as it's sometimes known. This happens to be made by Fuji. Now, Polaroid did make a version of this. It was like their Polaroid 100 series film. Um, but Fuji is sort of the last holdout, and this was actually officially discontinued by Fuji in uh, mid-2016. Uh, there's still stock available. I'll actually leave a link down below to Amazon. You can still buy it, and the prices have gone up astronomically. You used to be able to get a pack of 10, 10 photos for about $8, maybe $12 tops. Now they're around $25, but if you look at the price per sheet, you're getting a bigger negative than any of the Polaroid films. And the Polaroid films, even with the lower, new lower prices, still come out to about $2, if not more, per photograph. So the only one that I can find reliably, or that, that there's any you know, worthwhile stock, is this FP100C, which is a 100 speed film, and C stands for color. There was also a ton of other varieties, uh, black and white film, there was the 3000B, which was a very high speed emulsion. Um, but this does not work the same way that the Polaroid films work, the new Polaroid films. This is not an integral film process, and by integral film process with the sort of the SX-70 and all those other kind of cameras, the sort of pod and the developing all happens at once. So once the, the uh, picture, the positive, is actually ejected, spit through the rollers, the chemical is spread over the film, and there's nothing else to do. Here, it's actually, you know, because it's peel-apart film, there's actually a sandwich of a negative, a positive, and there's some chemicals in between in a, in a chemical pack that when they get squeezed through the rollers, you then have to peel apart to reveal the actual photograph. So hence why it gets the name peel apart film, also known sometimes as pack film. So believe it or not, this pack film, this peel apart film that we're talking about today, this format is not the original format of the Polaroid camera. So way back when Polaroid first started with this sort of style camera here, um, they'd use another type of film called roll film. So the original Model 95, which was the first camera Polaroid ever made, or this year Model 150, actually takes into account this roll film, which is a slightly different than pack film because it's not an integral pack. As you can see, there's two little rolls. You actually have to undo this, and this is extremely old. But you have basically these two different separate rolls and inside here is housed positive and negative and it's just it's a huge fuss it's like you know there's about 17 different steps to load this kind of camera uh, which makes it a pretty big hassle but back in 1947 when this camera came out I mean this was revolutionary right so you could see the picture within you know minutes of taking it if not less than a minute so this is roll film not what we're talking about today so what is pack film and how does it differ from roll film? Well, pack film comes in a pack and it's sort of a much more refined process. It's basically a cartridge that you put into a camera and the cameras that can use pack film are things like the original Polaroid Land cameras. This is the Land 195, there's, there's Model 100, 105, 300, 350, there's all kinds of different model numbers. They all have all kinds of different features. Um, but these original land cameras are what pack film is used in. And in fact, pack film is not just used in standalone cameras. They were very important back in the day for studio photographers who shot film. And what you would do is you would use one of these, which is a um, back. It's a special back. So this one here is for a 4x5 camera. You can actually stick in the back of the, uh, where the film insert would go for a 4x5 camera, and here is one that's fitted to, it mounts to a Hasselblad camera. So what you would do is you would load these with the peel apart film, and you would do your test shots with these, because you know we don't have digital preview back in the day of film, so you would use these backs, load it with the instant film, shoot you know in whatever you were shooting, and then you would peel this apart, and you would get an idea of what your exposure was going to be, what your composition was going to look like, and that way, you know, you could use this as a test and then you could go shoot a bunch of film and not have to worry about 
you know, you know, messing up the shot because you have some sort of level of confidence that what you see is what you're going to get. Now, this is extremely important in the studio when you're using flash photography because it's very hard to, you know, have challenging lighting situations and not know exactly, not getting that instant feedback that digital gives you. So this is really a lifesaver for a lot of photographers. So unfortunately, like I said, this film has been discontinued by Fuji. Polaroid hasn't made this film in a long time, and there's really no plans to revive this format. So, you know, this pack film, if you have the chance to shoot it, it's probably the last time you're going to be able to shoot it. And the price is not that bad, because you can find these LAN cameras for next to nothing. Uh, you know, $10, $20 for a LAN camera, because honestly, they don't make film for it anymore. So if you want, for less than 50 bucks, you can get a camera and 10 shots and kind of have fun with it and then have a nice little uh, conversation piece that you can put on your shelf or your photo camera collection. But the, the sad truth is that Fuji has no plans to bring this format back. In fact, they've dismantled most of the manufacturing machines that make this kind of film. And it's a very complex sort of engineer, feat of engineering as well as an emulsion. So, you know, the, the knowledge has been basically thrown out the window and lost. There was an initiative by New 55 to try and revitalize this, um, but unfortunately they have ceased production and they're, they're pursuing other topics. Um, Polaroid Originals, the, their CEO, has also expressed that they are not pursuing this format at this time. I'm gonna leave a, com a pinned comment down below with all this stuff that if you wanna read it yourself, you can, you can take a look at what people are saying about it and, and kind of efforts that have been made and the fact that it's really not gonna come back anytime soon. Um, this is a wonderful film to shoot with uh, and it's can produce some stunning images. And the best thing is that just like a just like an integral film uh, Polaroid, you get the image right away, except the quality of this film blows anything that uh, Polaroid Originals makes right now out of the water. I mean, it's just the, the resolution and, and the color, especially on this color film, uh, is just absolutely phenomenal. So let's take a quick look at how we would load this film into a camera. All right, so let's go over real quick how we load pack film. So we have our pack film here. Open the box, inside this box, it's going to be a foil packet. Don't press on the middle of the packet. Try and hand it, handle it by the sides whenever possible. So we're going to rip open the foil to reveal the pack film inside. Again, being careful not to touch the middle of the packet. So now we have this sort of black contraption. You can see a lot of tabs here and this big sort of uh, black dark slide that wraps around the film. So this is still light tight until we put it in the camera. We're gonna pull this dark slide out. So don't pull this out until you're ready to put it into camera. So put that away for just a second. And we'll get a camera out here that takes pack film. So this is the Polaroid 195. And all we do is we're gonna open this up. Now each sort of camera or uh, back that you use might be a little different, but they should all have the same basic features. So here is the you know, blank sort of old cartridge. And uh, we can get rid of this. It's kind of interesting to look at, you know, there's like a little pressure plate. It's all made of plastic, but it's actually a pretty interesting marvel of engineering how they got all this stuff together. So we'll throw that to the side. Now the important thing is whenever you switch packs that you have to clean these rollers. So in, this, in the example of this camera, there's a little red tab that you pull up on and these rollers kind of flip out. That gives you access to clean them and you can just take some you know, rubbing alcohol and a lint-free uh, lint cloth and kind of just make sure there's no chemical buildup or gunk that's gotten on these rollers that will cause uneven development by either putting too much distance between the rollers or, you know, you're basically you wanna have these as clean as possible so that make a nice, flat, even surface when the film pulls out. So when you uh, spread the chemicals, they spread evenly across the, the surface. So I've already cleaned these. Um, sometimes this sort of folds out like this. Sometimes there's like a little pinch mechanism and the whole thing, the whole roller assembly comes out. So whatever your style uses, make sure that these are clean and snapped back into place. Now we get our new pack of pack film and we're just gonna put it in. Usually, you know, the side towards the lens is gonna be this side here, which is, I don't know if it says on here, no, it doesn't say. But you just have to kind of notice that this is the side uh, that has a little frame where the negative would be. Goes towards the lens, put that in, just like that. Now here's where, <laughs> the first time I did this, I was like, okay, so I have to like thread this 
uh, black tab through something. I'm used to loading other kinds of film where you have to either thread or spool or something. It's actually much more simple than that. All we do is we put the pack in and all you have to do is close the door. Now, you wanna make sure that this black tab kind of stays accessible and then when you close this, you wanna make sure that both sides are closed and actually locked into place. And it's just as simple as pulling on this black tab to sort of release the dark slide. Now what's happening inside the camera is that dark slide is wrapping around and being pulled out this way. So it's gonna reveal the first negative sheet as well as start these little white tabs. So you just kind of give that a slow and constant pressure and now we are loaded. And if you notice on the white tab, there's a little number one indicating that you're on the first negative. So now whatever is in this camera is now able to be shot. It's sensitive to light. So if you were to open the shutter right now, or if you were to, uh, if you're on a, a, you know, another camera, if you're looking through the lens and you flip the mirror up or something, it is light sensitive. So this camera is now ready to shoot pack film. Okay, so that's how we load pack film or peel apart film into a camera that is designated for that type of uh, film. However, I think where this stuff really shines, um, at least for, you know, for people who still shoot film, is if you get a, uh, a back that is adapted to whatever format you're shooting, and it really gives you an idea of what you're getting before you get it. And then that way, if you have tricky lighting situations or you're really you know, dead set on getting the perfect composition, you can sort of get a preview of what you're doing without having to know, you know, go through rolls of film and develop the negatives and then scan the negatives or print the negatives. So where it really shines is, you know, right here in studio. So let's actually take a look at what we can use this back for. So I have here set up in studio a little scene over there. So we're going to show in real time what it's like to work with this film. So here I have a little still life setup. Got some apples in a nice little bowl here. I have a Hasselblad camera here. I have a back that has uh, is adapted for Hasselblad loaded with, actually this is loaded with um, FP100B black and white film. This is really old, so I'm not even sure if this is gonna work, but for demonstration purposes, you're gonna get the idea. Uh, we've got a pro photo strobe with a three foot octabox, just casting some light on here. And like I said, with film, we don't really have an idea of whether or not our, uh, what, what exactly our flash is gonna look like, you know, what the composition is gonna look like, uh, you know, because we don't have that instant feedback that digital gives us. So we're actually gonna take this, we're gonna put it on here and we're gonna shoot here. So to get started in the studio, the first thing we're gonna do is get our handy dandy light meter and we're gonna take some meter readings. So the meter is on, we're going to just take a quick test here. Looks like meter's telling us 1 25th of a second at F, let's say 22 for this power. Now, what we're going to do is we are going to, I always like to test, uh, make sure everything's working. Without the film back on it, we're gonna just take a shot here. Okay, so the flash does fire. One more for good measure. All right, so everything's working as far as we know, as far as we can tell. So now we can put the back on. What we're gonna do is we're gonna put the back on. We're gonna take the dark slide out. We're gonna take our picture and we are going to put the dark slide back in. I'm gonna remove the back from the camera. You don't have to, but what we're gonna, what we're gonna see is we're gonna pull on this tab and we're gonna develop this film uh, and pulling it with it on the camera can, can be dangerous. So take the back off, pull the film out uh, and develop it in real time and see what happens. So let's stick this Polaroid back on here like that. So back is secured. Gonna check focus one more time, looks good. We pull out the dark slide. So this is protecting the film. There's a nice little holder for it back here. All right, so not the most stable tripod in the world, but hey, all right. So we're gonna take our shot. Okay, advance the film. We're going to stick our dark slide back in, which is sometimes easier to do from the front. Now I could pull out the actual picture from here, but I don't want to pull the whole camera down with me. So I'm actually gonna remove the back like this. Now what we need is a stopwatch because this actually has to take some time to develop. So if I can find my stopwatch here. So this particular film uh, it takes about 30 seconds to develop. So we're going to pull on this little white tab. And that's gonna reveal this other black tab. 
and we were going to pull this with sort of constant pressure and they used to say that you would say like Polaroid, so like almost, you know, a little bit less than three seconds, but just slow and constant pressure. I've seen people rip these things out and that's, that's no good because you're gonna, you want even chemical coating across everything. So we're just going to slowly Polaroid, okay. I'm gonna start our timer. And for each of the films, there's actually instructions and it's temperature dependent. So there's actually gonna be instructions on here. And you know, the house here is, the studio is roughly, you know, 72 degrees Fahrenheit. So it's gonna say 30 seconds. So I'm gonna put this down. And we're gonna wait, we're at 25 seconds here. So in five seconds, we're going to peel apart the peel apart film and see what we get. So now we have, this is basically the negative and this is our positive. So there's all kinds of chemical gunk in here uh, and it can stain your clothing. So you kind of want to be a little bit careful. Uh, but now we have a picture of our scene and we can test our lighting and we can make adjustments based on this. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to remove all of this stuff. Now I've heard that there is a way to sort of recuperate the negative from here using bleach and all kinds of stuff. Maybe that's for a future video. I haven't actually tried it myself, uh, but it's definitely something that's interesting, being able to recover the negative from something like this. Um, and this is definitely old film. You can tell, um, in this case, I'm gonna, you know, I'll show you the, the picture here if you can see it. I'll, I'll, I'll actually have a scan of this so you can see it. Um, it's a little bit uneven in development and the area that's not exposed should basically go to pure black, which it has not, but it gives us a really good idea of the composition of our little still life fruit with apples. Um, it gives us a good idea of, of, of where sort of you can see the catch light in the reflection of the apples. You can see how the light is falling based on our setup here. And it gives us a really good preview. So now, now that I'm confident with these results, or maybe I take another test and uh, change a few things and make a final test. Now I'm confident that when I shoot a whole, a whole roll of 12 shots, or multiple rolls of, of different things with the same kind of lighting setup, I'm confident in my exposure values, I'm confident in sort of how things are gonna look. And I don't have to worry about that and go through the whole development process of the film negatives before finding out kind of what I'm going to get. So I hope that was a fun and informative look at peel apart film or pack film. Uh, and unfortunately, you know, this is coming, becoming harder and harder to come by and it's a really fun medium to work with. Again, you get that instant satisfaction of seeing the pictures that you take um, I've got, I have about, I think, five boxes of this left. You can still buy some on Amazon. Again, the link is going to be in the description if you want to pick a few of these up. But it's just, it's just sad that, that, you know, such a fun and interesting sort of film medium is, is going by the wayside. Um, but that's, that's the way it goes. You know, Fuji has definitely taken steps towards their Instax uh, instant film as well as their, their digital offerings. And it's just, I guess it's not cost effective to have this kind of film. So, you know, luckily we still have Polaroid who's, you know, trying to keep the integral film alive. Um, but this will be sorely missed and I know it's going to be missed by a lot of people. So let me know in the comments if you've ever shot with this film or if you've ever, you know, experienced the magic that is the peel apart film sort of miracle. I mean, it, when you think about it, it's just amazing the en engineering and ingenuity that went into making this film um, and how it, you know, meets up with the two parts meet up and they go through the rollers and all the chemicals and it's, it's, it's incredible. Um, so if you ever had a chance to shoot with this, uh, let me know in the comments. What, what did you use it on? What did you take pictures of? I have, you know, a couple boxes of this left. So I'm using this this year for a 2018 photo project, a weekly photo project. So if you're interested in the results of that, I'll, I'll cover that in another video. So stay tuned for that. And um, if you have the chance to work with this film, do it. So again, if you enjoyed this content, uh, you know, be sure to like this video. If you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do so. Uh, and uh, enable notifications to stay up to date on everything that is going on on the science of photography. And if you have other things you want me to review, like you know, old film stocks like this, or roll film, or any, anything that has to do with that, leave, uh, leave some comments down below, and I will take that into consideration. So thanks for tuning in, and as always, until next time, happy shooting.